Well, up first on the show, joining us is Professor Brahmar Mukherjee, Health Data Scientist, Chair of Biostatistics at the University of Michigan School of Public Health. And she's someone who's been studying and tracking India numbers since last year, since this pandemic began. In fact, in February, Professor Mukherjee had warned that the positivity rate in India was slowly rising. We'll just bring up that tweet, in fact, in which she said that it's time to really put the uh, uh, speed up the entire vaccination process. Uh, she had and she'd also said that cases were down that there was a need for an aggressive vaccination drive that was in february now she has talked about how we need to really uh, pull up our socks and and have a uh, speed up that vaccination drive also check for the variants remember the government has so far said that the variants aren't responsible uh, for the increase in the numbers this surge that we're seeing so professor mukherjee what is your view now on the situation that we're seeing in the country it's totally changed since we last spoke and we're reporting huge increase in cases every day So first of all, I think we are all a little startled by the peak and how sharp the curve curve is rising uh, because we are all wondering why the curve flattened out. But I always uh, talked when I talked with media and in our research that uh, to use the situation with the uh, grain of caution and use the tropes of the curve to really push out the vaccination plan. Uh, but it's it's the R has gone back up, it, which till like, you know, last Last May is when we saw uh, the basic reproduction number or the growth rate of the curve like this high. Uh, and uh, I think the second wave, at least in terms of the number of cases, is going to look looks like in terms of projections worse than the first one in terms of the daily number of cases. And given that there is almost no measures of containment and public have this false sense of security, uh, I am very alarmed. Right. And, uh, you know, initially as cases started rising, people said that, you know, the deaths are still low, so it's no need to panic right now. But now even the deaths have gone up. Yeah, so there are, there are several mysteries in this puzzle, like, you know, in this puzzle that we do not know. And I think we should proceed with caution and humility that there is a lot we do not know. Uh, but the Cero surveys really puzzled us, right, that 50% people are uh, getting infected in Pune and even higher in some Cero surveys reported. And that shows that uh, there are possibly lots of reinfections happening and there may be new strains of variants. And uh, if you let the, uh, let the number of infections grow like this, even if the infection fatality rate is low or 0.1%. If you let everybody get the disease, you are going to get total number of deaths to be quite large. And every death is not just a statistics. It's an empty chair in a person stable in a family. So I think I don't buy this argument that the death rate is low and let the infection grow. So the total number of deaths could be huge. And what is your view on the variant? Because currently the government says uh, that uh, the variants and the surge are not linked. Yes, so I do think that we need more genomic surveillance. So uh, I think I tweeted about it that we need really uh, accelerated vaccination in areas of high transmission in this cycle and in the past cycle. Because my hypothesis is probably the immunity from past infection is waning and also do genomic surveillance. This is really, really important. And also to alert the public that this is not to be taken lightly because I, I see that uh, there is a sort of group of people, including my own family, who took the highest level of precaution in the first wave. They are going out. So I call them the pristine prey for the virus. They were never exposed, but now they have even let their guards down. So it's a confluence of many things. And with the elections coming up and big rallies, uh, if the case now, and the more that you let the infection grow, the more chance for the virus to mutate. So this is very concerning. And what are your views on lockdowns as a measure to combat these growing numbers? Yeah, so, you know, lockdowns are not a solution to the problem, right? Lockdowns are temporary measures. I think that we are in a situation where the vaccine is here. So I think that 
like strategic lockdown in high transmission areas is definitely a good strategy when the virus is getting out of control to keep the curve in check and also so that the healthcare capacities do not collapse. So if you can have the enough number of beds to treat COVID patients, that should be our benchmark for lockdown. But it's extremely important for people to take their personal precautions. And that's where I see the greatest danger that maybe this is the like, you know, everybody talked about so many people in India have already gotten the disease based on the seroprevalence studies. And so we are closer to herd immunity. Uh, but that was a wrong message to transmit. It was our opportunity to take the troughs of the uh, like, you know, the virus curve. The, it has valleys and troughs. So when, when you're in a valley, just push, push the vaccination out. But the vaccination, I think, is the where we need the ramping up. A local strategic lag lockdowns could be a solution, but not not really. I don't envision a national lockdown again. So what are your views on India's vaccine drive? So far, we're hitting around 3 million jabs a day some days. So it has been about two and a half to three million. On good days, it has been three million doses. Uh, I think that we definitely need to, need to go to somewhere between five to 10 million. Because if you think about India's adult population, it's about 800 million people that we need to vaccinate. I also think that um, doing a one-shot vaccine Right, like the JNJ is going to be really beneficial for India because there are real issues with vaccine adherence. At the same time, if you open up the market for other vaccines like mRNA and people who can afford it can get it, I really think that a multi-pronged approach is necessary uh, and as many good vaccines as you can and as many shots in the arms because we have to get to 5 to 10 million shots every day if we have some hope of uh, controlling this pandemic in real time. All right, Professor Mukherjee, thank you so much for speaking to us again on NDTV. So that brings me to the second issue we're discussing on the show today. How do we ramp up the vaccinations in the country? Now, the center has said yesterday that door-to-door -door vaccination against COVID will not be feasible, even as it's our states to ensure 100% saturation of vaccination. Now, that means that complete the vaccinations of the priority age groups, which from 1st of April is above 45 years of age, and complete that in the next fortnight, especially in districts where COVID cases are surging. So is is it time for a change in strategy? Do we need to think out of the box to drive up the vaccine numbers? Well, uh, we are joined now by Dr. Rajesh Aparek, Director of Medical Research, Just Look Hospital, and Dr. Anita Ramesh Chandra, Clinical Trial Specialist, uh, joining us there from Chennai. Thank you both doctors for joining us again on the show to discuss all the different crises that break out. And uh, Dr. Anita, first to you. Is it time to, you know, change our strategy? We do know in Ludhiana, in Punjab, you know, they, they, they might be going door to door. They're going to open up the vaccines in, uh, in, in uh, Mumbai as well. They've made a request for door to door, though that hasn't been accepted yet by the center. Yes, you're right, Gargi. I think this is a time because the second wave is rising and you know how much of the cases are rising. I'm in the hospital. We are in short of beds and patients are again piling up in the OPD. So it is very, very important to have innovative ideas for vaccination drive. Yes, government has done so well. It is so good. First of April, we are opening up to 45 and above. And I think also we need to open up to the college going students and those who are going for work, those who are on election duty, those who have regular duty works. Yes, door-to-door -to -door vaccination. I do uh, up, like it also, like how we get the oral polio. But remember, polio is only for children, but this improves a large number of people. Yes, those uh, pilots, strip who are working in the defense, all alert jobs needs to be vaccinated yes and all private sectors all hospital all dispensary has to open up and what i feel the vaccine is safe i have taken both the doses and all the people taking in my hospital is very safe but you can also open up giving vaccination in small dispensaries all around india you know in india there are many private practitioners who are giving who are in uh, practicing in the local places so open up right. everything so that people can walk in take the medicine and it can be door to door because i know i have an old grand and great grandmother who is 90 but then she cannot come to the hospital so we have not vaccinated her so yes door to door put put in all your steps all the innovative ideas and vaccinate because indian vaccine is quite good and the results right. are very impressive right very, hopefully very impressive. we'll get more vaccines soon as well dr parik your view on that what are the challenges you foresee in trying to open it up what are the reasons the government the central government so far is you know reluctant on this it'll also help convincing people because many people aren't going to the clinics but if the 
uh, you know, medical practitioners actually come to them and try to convince them, we'll see numbers going up. Well, uh, good afternoon, Gargi. It's always a challenge to carry out any program on a door-to-door -door basis. Uh, there are issues that could come which could set the whole campaign uh, behind. Uh, for example, if there is anaphylaxis or, you know, severe allergy uh, reaction, which cannot be controlled in the home, uh, you know, it will be all over the media and that will give the program a setback. Even the polio campaigns or the smallpox campaigns, which we carried out successfully, were not done door to door. So that is understandable. But, you know, you asked a very interesting question twice over, and I cannot resist the temptation to answer it, that is it time to change strategy? Gargi, it's always time to change strategy, because unlike a discussion on television, where we have all the graphs and charts in front of us, to be able to discuss it in a contemplative manner. In the real world outside, there's chaos, it's dynamic, the situation is changing constantly, and just as the virus is mutating, our thinking has to mutate, our plans have to mutate, and we have to move fast. Uh, if uh, you have a minute, I'll tell you how this can be done. Yes, go ahead. So who do we listen to? Well, I'm glad you started with Professor Mukherjee. I didn't mind the wait at all. The data scientists are the people who we should listen to. They have been right all along. Last February, uh, when we wrote the, uh, the book, uh, the first book on the coronavirus, we used mathematical models, which are fairly robust. And till today, those models have held up. Uh, we wrote a policy paper in December, warning of the second pandemic, which occurred three months later and what to do. Here's the problem. Uh, as Bertrand Russell once wrote, the problem with the world is that uh, fools and fanatics are full of certainty, whereas, uh, you know, wise people are always full of doubts. So Professor right. Mukherjee and a data scientist, those of us who look at data, are always talking in uncertain terms, which is the way it should be. We're talking of probabilities. And yet you'll have politicians Talking of certainties, everything is under control. We are going to wrap this up very fast. I think it's time that uh, we spoke with and listened to uh, the mathematical models, the data scientists a bit more and uh, need to be a less Right, uh, absolutely. Ourselves. And, you know, we have this, this dichotomy in the sense you have the, you know, health ministry uh, talking about states need to, you know, pull up their socks, uh, you know, quicken the vaccine drive, uh, ensure protocols. But then on the ground, uh, you know, we're going ahead with the campaigning. We have the Kumbh Mela that is beginning, which is the largest gathering on earth. And, uh, you know, so different uh, things are happening on the ground and different things happening uh, from the government and here in TV studios. Thank you so much, uh, both doctors, for joining us once again on the show. And we will, of course, uh, return to you for uh, more uh, on this story as, in, as the coronavirus situation is evolving in the country. Uh, with that time for us to slip into a short break. On the other side, as we said, it's data really that should drive us. And we'll take a look at all the COVID data we have. Welcome back. Well, let's now take a look at the latest COVID numbers in India reported 53,480 cases in the last 24 hours. As you can see, an increase of 2,731. So it's come down slightly than the numbers reported yesterday. The number of deaths is 354, which is the highest in the last three months. Here you can see the worst affected states, the ones that are in red, the ones that are orange are moderate and the green is the least affected states so far. So let's just take a look at the numbers in the top five states. States. And there you can see Maharashtra uh, leading with 27,918 cases being reported in the last 24 hours. And uh, worry there with Chhattisgarh also reporting over 3,000 cases, 3,108. Karnataka is uh, reporting uh, 2,975, nearly 3,000, uh, followed by Kerala and uh, Tamil Nadu. Well, let's take a look at the highest deaths in Maharashtra reporting 139 uh, deaths in the last 24 hours, followed by Punjab, which is reporting 64 deaths in 24 hour period, then Chhattisgarh, Karnataka and uh, Kerala. So let's take a look at the vaccine doses that have been administered so far. And while in uh, the total number of vaccine doses has been over 6.3 crore uh, vaccines, uh, uh, vaccine jabs have been given in the country. But you can see in terms of per 100 people, 
it's quite low. It's Israel that's leading with 115 uh, doses uh, per 100 people, followed by UAE, Chile, UK and Bahrain. And India coming in uh, much lower at 4.43 per 100 people. So while overall uh, the numbers are very high, uh, the numbers of vaccines that we've given are very high, what's worrying is the per 100 and, and you know, the percentage of our population remains very, very low. And what is worrying now with this latest surge in the coronavirus cases is the positivity rate. Four weeks ago, it was 2%. And this is the number of cases turning out positive in, in terms of the number of uh, tests being conducted. And uh, it's, it's uh, two weeks ago, it was 3.1, 4.2. And now it is 5.8%. That means it's gone over that mark of 5%. The aim is to keep the positivity rate down over uh, under 5%. That means we're not testing enough. We need to ramp up the testing to bring down the positivity rate. But it's a worry as more cases are testing positive vis-a-vis uh, -vis the number of uh, cases that we're testing every single day. So big uh, worry there. And here you can see the number of tests that have been uh, conducted. Uh, though now, of course, uh, everybody's looking more at the number of uh, vaccines that has been given. As we said, Maharashtra is the big worry, Kerala, Karnataka, Andhra Pradesh as well. And if we take a look at world numbers, India is at number three. Uh, U.S. is leading uh, with the maximum number of cases, followed by Brazil and then by India. Well, that's all the time we have on the show today. Thanks so much for watching. Goodbye.